What's up guys, DHA6 will here. Sorry, this isn't going to be a running video or a how-to video. This is a, it's just going to be an overview of the three RCs that I've waterproofed so far. I'm going to start off with the Trekker, and uh, that's a honcho, and it's my Wraith. Anyway, rip it apart there. This took 20 minutes to waterproof. Basically, I just uh, ripped apart all the pieces that were in the middle here, all the little uh, battery trays and uh, ESC tray. Took and uh, mixed up some JB Weld uh, two-part epoxy resin or whatever you want to call it. And I just put a thin layer of that all the way around the seam of the ESC receiver combo. Um, cut off the on-off switch, twisted it together, um, JB Welded it. Uh, JP Weld around pretty much pretty much everything, man. Um, it was uh, the tool of choice, I guess I could say for this one. Um, JP Weld all the way around the servo there, and then uh, marine grease, of course, on the front. The uh, axles in there, and around my hand out of the way, around the transmission there. Don't worry about that little circuit board on the back of the brushed motor. Um, I dunked it right in the water, man. Uh, it's fine. Don't have to worry about that. It might corrode up eventually, but I think at like $15, $17 a pop for the motors, uh, not a big deal. Um, nickel metal hydride batteries do not have to be waterproofed, but I had some extra JB Weld mixed up, so I just uh, coated it anyway. Uh, same, same with this one. Just helps keep them cleaner, too. Electrical tape if you run out or if you just want a quick fix. But uh, that's the Trekker, man. It was super easy to waterproof. It took 20 minutes and 6 hours to dry. But anyway, move on to the honcho here. This one was a little bit harder to waterproof, basically because the receiver and ESC aren't together. They're separate. I used a little jar here for the speed controller. Basically, just take the lid off and drill a hole in the center. Cut down the side so you can feed the wires through and get them in the center here. And then uh, take JB Weld and seal it in there all the way around. You usually take uh, tape and tape off the inside of the lid and all the wires so the JB Weld doesn't push through or run through while it's uh, setting up and drying. And then uh, just take tear your tape off when it's dry, flip it over and do the outside. And uh, you get a rock solid seal right there for your wires, man. It's nothing getting through there. And then uh, the outside jar, you just put it on over the top and uh, marine grease all the threads and then screw it on there. and. And I went ahead and electrical taped them around the outside. There's nothing getting in through there, man. Nothing at all. Um, I even went ahead and uh, plastic dipped uh, this ESC. So if condensation builds up in there, if you're like running hot and cold in like summer, uh, if water builds up in there and drips on the ESC, it's uh, it's plastic dipped. I didn't uh, plastic dip the ESC in this one, and uh, it's holding up. I ain't worried about it, man. Not a biggie. But uh, let's see what else. Uh, this is a nickel metal or excuse me, nickel cadmium battery, uh, NICD or whatever you want to call it. It's uh, ones I usually uh, let my niece and nephew play with the RCs. These ones don't uh, give you as much power as the LiPo, metal hydride, and, and uh, nickel cadmium. But uh, yeah, that's for when the kitties are playing with it. I don't want the two cell LiPo this thing off a cliff or nothing. But uh, the receiver box I uh, took apart and I, uh, I plastic dipped those as well inside the, the receiver. I uh, fed the receiver wire out as far as I could, so as long as this stays above the water level, um, it'll still get a signal and you can still drive. So uh, if you want to have a really long receiver wire sticking up, man, you can drive in like two feet of water, so no problem. But uh, anyway, um, marine grease on the inside, uh, around the joints or the seal or whatever, squished it together, uh, JB Weld all the way around that. Um, it's it's pretty much bulletproof. This servo, I took the plastic dip method, and uh, it worked out really good. Just uh, trimmed the excess plastic dip around the servo horn, um, so that would uh, move freely, and uh, it's holding up really good. I've ran this thing probably 25, 30 packs. Sorry for the plane. Anyway, uh, this servo, um, I just did the JP weld method. And it, it was quick and easy. Problem with this though. Um, it's not very impact resistant. If you smash this thing into a rock going like 15 miles an hour, the JB Weld can crack and fracture. So just something to keep in mind. Um, that's the stock servo. I'm not worried about that one. And I plan on upgrading eventually, but for this one, I'm running a two cell LiPo because I like the extra power for the 2.2 tires. Kind of kind of needs it. But uh, the receiver box and batteries just floating around up in here for now. I, uh, 
still got to work it or make it a little more uh, stable but same method uh, marine grease on the inside threads JB weld on the outside feed the wires through receiver wire up floating around the top there another uh, jar in the back for the speed controller and uh, marine grease on pretty much every other mechanical joint man around the freaking dry straps uh, crack open your uh, axles there and marine grease uh, around all your bearings and um, don't worry about brush motors brush motors you don't have to waterproof brushless different story uh, I pretty much think those are sealed as well nowadays you don't have to worry about those but yeah um, just just the ESC speed controllers basically and the receivers are the two that I would worry about the most and then the lipo batteries um, seal the both ends and the balance plug of course uh, you cannot get the balance plugs wet if you do um, you'll go into safety mode or whatever anyway um, that's about it for now guys uh, sorry I didn't have more but um, yep that's it later